everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and it's time for your weekly wrap up. And I want to begin by thanking our latest Patreon supporters as well as an upgrader as well. So I want to thank John Pallone, Jason Alec, uh, and Jun Liu, who was one of our winners of the Steam giveaway a few weeks ago. And since Hosh Ballas Bermanian uh, did an upgrade on his Patreon as well, I'm still working on that pronunciation. Hopefully I got it right this time. If not, I'll give you a do-over. Just let me know uh, in the comments below or send me an email. So this week we got a bunch of stuff done, uh, some interesting stuff too. We had an interview with a lawyer about the disclosures we've been talking about a lot here on the channel. You know, the things that we should be thinking about uh, when working with brands and how to disclose uh, when things are provided free of charge or when an advertiser comes into play on a video. And it was a really interesting discussion. In fact, people really were into it. So it was really good to get a lot of good feedback from folks. And I also want to remind everyone that I have a podcast feed of all of these longer interviews. It's just audio. Uh, but if you have a podcasting application, on, I think I'm on just about every platform there is, uh, you can go ahead and download these audio versions uh, completely in their entirety and listen to it on your device, in your car, on your commute, or however else you want to listen to it. So you can get them there. Uh, we also had, speaking of sponsorships, a sponsored post this week from uh, Silverfast. They make some software that allows you to scan negatives into your computer. And we covered how to use their software to start archiving your old film. And I've got plenty of it. Uh, it was kind of an interesting video and you can check that out. A lot of the concepts here actually work on other software also, so they do tend to follow the same uh, path for ingest, but uh, their software I think is actually pretty good at getting things into your computer in a uh, really quick and efficient way. Uh, we also looked at some products as we always do. We had an update on the Voyo V3 mini PC. I ins reinstalled Windows on it. I uh, did get it to work, uh, provided that I went out and downloaded the Chinese version of Windows 10 first from Microsoft, but I was able to get around some of the security issues we had previously. Uh, a couple of you wrote in, including Jason Alec, one of our new uh, Patreon uh, supporters, about uh, which edition of Windows to get to get it to activate, and that was what we were able to do to get everything working. And I also got uh, some drivers from some folks too, so hopefully I'll get the audio working on it again. We're going to be coming back to that maybe in the next couple of days, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we also looked at the Lenovo Yoga 900, a really nice uh, you know, higher end PC, but very nicely designed and very lightweight two-in-one from Lenovo. Uh, and last night we looked at the HP OfficeJet 4650 and uh, we covered the printer, but also uh, how they're doing ink on the HP side of the world these days where they have, uh, you can still you know, go out and buy the ink cartridges from your office supply store or you can subscribe to their new ink service. And uh, that lets you basically buy the printer for a hundred bucks and then pay anywhere from three to $10 a month depending on your amount of printing to uh, get those ink cartridges delivered to your door. Uh, this is a, one of those things where you gotta be a smart consumer and kind of do the math and decide whether or not it works for you. But I think for some folks it might actually work out pretty well. Now Epson, uh, who I did a review of probably about two, maybe three or four months ago or maybe two months ago, who knows, I lose track of time these days. Uh, they have a printer that costs more. It's in the same class as this one. Uh, but they give you like two years of ink. So their solution is to just give you a huge ink tank uh, and charge you full rate for the printer and that ink uh, where HP is charging you the kind of the subsidized price for the printer as most are priced currently and then having a subscription model for the ink. And I think in either of those two scenarios, uh, you will save money in the long term uh, going with one of those versus just buying a printer and getting cartridges as you're going through them. And I think for a lot of people, like myself included, I just don't print as much as I used to just because of that cost or uh, go to laser printers that sometimes have a little bit better capacity on there. I want to give you an update. Our basement studio project is moving along. There's really nothing uh, new to show you photographically. We've got all the framing up like you saw last week. We're in the process right now of moving all the mechanicals around uh, because we're basically turning my basement into a usable space. So we've got things hanging on the ceiling that we got to move because I want to keep that ceiling height really high. So maybe next week I'll do a little video tour uh, as things are moving along a little bit better. We'll ho hopefully get the electrical uh, working in the next uh, couple of days too. So a lot of good progress down there. I hope to be in there pretty soon. So uh, uh, stay tuned. It may not look all that attractive initially, but we'll uh, spruce it up as time goes on. All right, now it's time for some q and I've got a really good one here from Screen Playhouse LLC. And we've been going back and forth on uh, whether or not these mini PCs could have uh, some dangerous things installed on them. And that uh, conversation began out of that Voyo mini PC where it came installed with an account already pre-built uh, and user account control disabled. So it had the potential to have some bad stuff on it when it arrived. They didn't find any, but you never know what kind of rootkit 
uh, could have found its way to the computer. And Screen Playhouse here was wondering uh, whether or not somebody could actually uh, inject software even with a fresh installation of Windows. And normally that wouldn't be the case, that when you wipe out a computer and install Windows, everything uh, kind of starts from scratch. And that is true. However, with Windows 8 and 10, uh, something changed and they in and put in an uh, anti-theft uh, software mechanism that allowed uh, some of these anti-theft software packages to reinstall themselves automatically even if the Windows operating system was uh, you know, reinstalled or the whole drive was formatted. The BIOS would kind of trigger this process to uh, get that software back on the computer. And as you'll see in this article here, Lenovo was actually using this to install some of their persistent software. Uh, you can go to Ars Technica and read about that. They stopped doing this practice, but uh, they were taking advantage of that anti-theft mechanism to do it. So uh, the short answer here, this is a great article, by the way, if you're curious about how that worked. Uh, the short answer is that it is theoretically possible to uh, inject software in that way onto a Windows computer, even with a fresh install and even with a copy of Windows that comes direct from Microsoft and not from uh, the mini PC manufacturer. So again, I, I'm going to reiterate, buyer beware on these things because you never know where they came from or where they've been. Uh, this is a complex thing to do right, but it's possible. And again, this is a uh, thing that was a, more of an anti theft mechanism that Lenovo kind of jumped onto to get their own software on there. So be careful. But yes, unfortunately, if you uh, want to be uh, paranoid as uh, Screen Playhouse is, uh, it is possible to do this and it might be uh, justifiable paranoia in that particular instance. Our next question comes from Ryan Martinez and he's curious if we'll ever see a Surface 3 Pro kind of uh, Chromebook because we're starting to see now two-in-one Chromebooks where you can flip the screen around and use it like a tablet. Uh, so we're starting to encroach a little bit perhaps into Android's territory. And he's wondering if we might see kind of a Surface clone in a Chromebook. And I would say yes, it's probably going to happen at some point. Uh, Google did come out with a device that has that Surface uh, feel to it. However, that one's running Android and not Chrome OS. But uh, I think we're going to see as PC manufacturers keep getting more and more demand from consumers or potentially potential demand from consumers for that kind of form factor, uh, I have no doubt we'll see a Chrome OS device looking like one of those things if uh, the market will bear that kind of device. And I, I would bet they'll probably try it at some point. And, and all the all the, uh, the guts in the software are there to do it. We've seen with those two-in-ones, when you flip it over, uh, they've developed a way of accessing uh, the Chromebook's features without a keyboard and mouse. I and mean, then you can even do the handwriting recognition on it too. So I think it's entirely possible we'll see something like that uh, coming up in the next uh, year or so. We don't want to announce one yet, but I'm sure somebody will try it. That's one, one of the things that we're seeing in the PC industry right now is everybody's trying everything just to try to get the sales boosted up again. Uh, PC sales have not been growing the way that uh, some of the other devices in the marketplace have been growing, like mobile phones, and even mobile phones are starting to slow down a bit too. So I think we're going to see more and more experimentation in the marketplace. We're seeing that right now on the Windows side. Uh, everybody's coming up with Surface clones now because uh, there is some perceived demand for this. I've actually been asking a lot of uh, manufacturers when I'm on some of these press calls about whether or not people are actually buying these things or if they think they're going to buy them. And uh, what's happening is a lot of manufacturers are just trying to put something out there they think consumers might be interested in. They're doing some research on these, obviously, but uh, there's not a lot of evidence to suggest at the moment that the surface kind of design is what people really want. But again, they're trying to do anything to boost sales. And the best part for us consumers is now we have a ton of choices as to how we want our PCs configured, which I think is the, the best part about this whole story. So short answer to the question, I have no doubt we will see a Chromebook in a Surface-like uh, form factor coming up in the future. All right, our next question here is a twofer because they are kind of related. Euros Tech Center is wondering how I have time to do this YouTube stuff considering that I'm a dad, I have a job, I'm a dog owner and all this other stuff. Uh, and Jacob Cook is wondering how I keep my energy level up throughout the recording. The energy level is a good question. Sometimes I don't know how I do it. I have a rule where uh, I don't stop recording a video in the sense that I uh, won't get up from the table here and walk away and come back two hours later. My, my rule is that if I start recording something, I'm going to get all the shots done and get it ready for editing before. I go off and do something else. And a lot of times that motivation to uh, maybe go watch the movie I've been wanting to go watch or take the dog for a walk or something is enough to get the energy level up so that the video will uh, pass muster for my boss, who's me, <laughs> to uh, get the video edited and uploaded. I sometimes go through a lot of takes because it's just, however the video comes out just isn't looking right to me and I will go back and actually shoot an entire you know 10 minute section of a video just to get it exactly the way I want it to. And sometimes I probably push myself harder on that than I should, but but 
um, I'm really, I got a good gut feel now as to what's going to do well and what doesn't. And I can really uh, say, you know, I could have said that better, or maybe I should present this a different way. So I go back and kind of do that. And uh, sometimes you just have to find the energy and, and put it together. I, I tend to be a higher energy person. Sometimes I'll have a little a cup of coffee or something before I uh, start working on stuff, especially on the weekends. But uh, generally I just kind of, you know, plow through it. And I like what I'm doing so much that that really does help bring the energy level to it. Uh, as for, uh, uh, for Euro's question, you know, it's, it's tough because I really have to squeeze this into all the other things in my life. Um, the good thing is, is that because I've been so focused on efficiency, uh, that has been able to uh, allow me to produce a lot more content than I would otherwise. So I've talked a lot about why I use a TriCaster, why I record things directly to disc, uh, because if I can switch the camera like this right now, uh, that's one less edit I have to do when I plug the videos into the computer for final assembly. And really my editing is more assembly than it is editing. I'm actually taking these clips, just you know, stacking them together, putting the intro and the outro on, uh, and uploading it. And that's how I'm able to do as much as I can do uh, because I found a way to work that uh, fits within my very limited amount of time I have to produce content. So sometimes though, you have to just make time. Uh, and those are the nights where I'm up to two o'clock in the morning or sometimes later uh, finishing up something because I really need to get certain products up as quickly as possible, especially when they first come out or something that I know is gonna do really well. Uh, I'll push really hard to get something up. And sometimes that will come at the cost of sleep. However, I have been uh, getting better about managing my time a little bit in the sense that, all right, if, if I'm going to be up to two o'clock in the morning uh, tonight, maybe tomorrow I'm not going to do a video just to give myself a little bit of a uh, breather on that. So, uh, but you do, you give up a lot of things for building things that you love. So I don't see as many movies as I used to. I don't even watch movies at home anymore because I'm usually in here doing stuff. I don't play many video games anymore. Uh, so a lot of my spare time is uh, doing this and my family time and my job and all the other things that I have in my life are sometimes a higher priority. The family life is always a higher priority. So I like to spend as much time with my daughter as possible. So when she goes to bed is when I come in here and start uh, doing my thing. And sometimes she's in the next room uh, trying not to fall asleep. And sometimes I have to get up and go and deal with that. But most of the time uh, she's in bed. I can get my videos done. And I'm usually uh, done around midnight or so, which is why my videos show up around the time that they do. I upload them and then I uh, re retire for the evening, but I actually check my phone for like the half hour after they upload just to see what the comments are looking like. Because if I mess something up, one of you is going to see it right away and I can go ahead and uh, make a correction before uh, the video has had too much time to get out there. So all of that stuff is really helpful from uh, what I get back from all of you. So this week we've got uh, a couple of things that I am definitely hoping to get to. Uh, one is <laughs> this thing that I keep bringing up every week. This is our uh, mini PC with the ethernet. I think this week might be the week. So stay tuned if I get to it. Uh, another good thing that's happened this week is on the NVIDIA Shield TV, my favorite set-top box, uh, the Android M update got pushed out to the device this morning. So I hoped maybe tomorrow to do something on uh, what Android M looks like on the NVIDIA Shield. It's not a huge update from what you might see with it, but there are a couple of things in there uh, that will be useful to people, especially the new SD card feature. It works just like it does on the phones. I'll probably cover it again and show you how it works on the Shield, um, but you can now use expanded storage on this device. I would not recommend it for the 500 gig device. I mean, definitely do the M update, but uh, you don't need that expanded storage if you have the 500 gig hard drive on your, on your Shield. But for those who have the 16 gig unit, uh, you can buy a larger card and now use that as internal storage and I'll step through what that means. They also made some adjustments to the color profile on it so hopefully it'll uh, look at a little bit better for some of the home theater enthusiasts that were not happy with uh, the contrast on it. And I, th I think they may have improved that. I'm going to be putting it on my other device uh, later tonight and uh, check it out for sure. So that is going to be coming up. Uh, and I will finally tell you the story of the Surface Book. We are uh, just maybe a day or two away of resolving this problem I've had for good. Uh, so I'll talk more about it and uh, really the, the, the trials and tribulations of this premium product from Microsoft that unfortunately did not uh, meet my expectations over the long term. I'll tell you more about that uh, later this week. I got another little thing on the HP printer and how you can set up Google Cloud Print through it. And I've got, oh, I got a great uh, gaming keyboard uh, that just came out from Logitech that we'll be looking at too. So a whole bunch of stuff to uh, be, look forward to hopefully on the channel this week after I get some rest tonight. If you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon like our folks did at the beginning of the show here. Uh, we also take one-time contributions at lon.tv on my YouTube page. So if you uh, don't want the monthly commitment, there's a way to toss a few bucks to the channel. And you can also shop on Amazon at lon.tv slash Amazon. And every uh, purchase you make on Amazon will uh, have a portion of that sale go to the channel. Your price stays the same, but we get 
uh, a piece of the action, so to speak. Uh, when you go to lon.tv slash Amazon, it'll bring you to my review page, but anything you do on Amazon after hitting that link, uh, no matter how deep into Amazon you get, uh, we'll get credit for here on the channel. And all those funds right now are going towards the fund that I use to buy things on the channel to review and then resell. Uh, so our Voyo PC is an example of that. Uh, we're, I'm trying to get it back to its, uh, its factory fresh setting with working drivers. And once I do, I'll probably put that one up for sale on the, uh, on the store there. But I'll sell it at a loss, of course, as I always do. So there's always a little bit of a loss there and that fund helps that. However, what I am striving to get to is at a level where some of those funds can go towards helping pay a helper uh, here on the channel to do some things because one of the nice things about moving down into the basement studio is that I have an entrance where uh, I can have somebody come in during the day while I'm at my day job and get some things set up for me over the course of the day. I'm going to be doing that regardless of where the Patreon fund ends up, but uh, the amount of hours that that person can work will be determined by how much subscriber revenue we see uh, from that. So eventually that fund will kind of shift from item purchasing over to uh, helping meet the payroll uh, on some of that stuff. We're going to be a job creator here on this channel. I'm really excited about uh, that coming into being. I have a couple other things I've been thinking about also related to bringing on some additional help uh, to do more with the channel because I have a lot of people asking for stuff that I just can't deliver right now and I really want to do a lot of what you're asking for. So uh, we're working on it. I've got some plans. We're going to be uh, looking at doing that. Now, if you want to connect with the channel, you can go to lon.tv slash email and sign up for our email list. We have my Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook and I uh, post a lot on there and it's not always channel related stuff. So I'm always finding interesting links that kind of throw them out on there. So uh, join that and discuss. Uh, we have our forums at lon.tv slash forums and the Reddit. It's starting to grow. So uh, head over there and post some links and get yourself some karma too. So I'm, I'm lurking on there. I do pop in every day and check it out and I'll be doing more on there too moving forward. So that'll do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for watching. Keep those comments coming. Get me some Q&A for next week and we'll see you soon with whatever I decide to upload next. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.